is my pleasure to tell you that you don't have to listen to me this morning. The Devar Torah will be by Dr. David Patterson. Now, I'd also like to welcome you to the 26th annual Mark A. Siegel Scholar in Residence Program. Mark Siegel would be proud to know he continues to make an impact on Congregation Beth Torah. Mark was devoted to Beth Torah, having been an active member since 1977. He received his PhD in German history with special emphasis on the Holocaust. Mark was inspired by education and learning. He devoted his life to it as a teacher and a publisher and by being active in Jewish educational programs. It was not enough that he loved to learn. He wanted everyone to feel as passionate about learning as he did. Mark served on Beth Torah's Adult Education Committee from its inception, eventually becoming its chairperson until his death in 2002. His goal was simple. He wanted to offer varied educational opportunities to as many congregants as possible in the hope that something would be available to please everyone's taste. Dr. David Patterson is the Hillel A. Feinberg Chair in Holocaust Studies in the Ackerman Center at the University of Texas at Dallas. Dr. Patterson served as the series editor of the Anti-Semitism series and the co-editor of the Weinstein series in Post-Holocaust Studies at the University of Washington Press. He is a winner of the National Jewish Book Award and the Koret Jewish Book Award. He has published more than 35 books and 200 articles. His most recent books include The Holocaust and the Non-Representable Forthcoming, as well as Antisemitism and its Metaphysical Origin. Today, Dr. Patterson will present the Devar Torah, and then after lunch, he will lead a conversation on contemporary antisemitism from left-wing intellectuals to Islamic jihadists to college campuses. I want to thank the committee, the VP of Education, Justin Ross, the adult ed co-chairs, Robin Popick and Evelyn Ute, our director of congregational learning, Barry Schweitzer, and Roz Krupas for her wonderful work in coordinating the food. Dr. Patterson. Thanks so much, Rabbi. Thank you all uh, for being such uh, welcoming and gracious hosts. Uh, thank, thanks to my friends, my students who have uh, taken the trouble to come here, who have all suffered through my homilies many times before, and yet here they are. Um, uh, today, uh, the, the rabbi has already touched on a point that I want, wanted to you know, develop a little bit, namely the, the, the name of the word, what the word teva means. Teva, as the rabbi pointed out, means not only ark, but also word. Um, the, 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 the flood, which is a confusion, as I mentioned last night, a mabul and a bavel, or babel, or cognates of the same word, it's a confusion that comes with the tearing of word from meaning. Violence happens, the Hamas of the generation, the violent generation of Noah comes about when the word collapses, when meaning is torn away from the word. So God tells, before he mentions the uh, flood, he tells Noah to build a teva. Uh, it's the word that, that carries Noah over the face of the deep. And it's a word that has had meaning restored to it. Um, God tells Noah to come into the word. And uh, the Baal Shem Tov teaches us that this is a summons to come into to the Torah, the word uh, in which meaning that is attached, where meaning is attached. How does meaning attach to the word? Where does the word connect with meaning? Word connects with meaning where human being connects with human being. Um, truth is, is what sanctifies the life of the other person, what affirms the sanctity of the other person, the other human being. To speak meaningful words to one another is to affirm the dearness of one another, the infinite responsibility that we have each for the other. And that's exactly what collapses in the time of the flood. 
Um, there's an interesting word, speaking of words, in uh, chapter 6, verse 16, the word sohar. The rabbis, uh, you know, have various discussions about what sohar is exactly. The sohar tatse leteva, make a, a, a skylight or a light for the for the ark. Um, once again, uh, here the Baal Shem Tov has uh, the founder of Hasidism, one of the great sages of the 18th century, says that this means that for any of us, that in order to sustain ourselves over the face of the deep, we have to draw light into the word, meaning into the word, truth into the word, and that we do that by drawing the word into a human relation, affirming the dearness of one another. We do that by drawing holiness into the word. Um, the Baal Shem teaches that uh, there's an Aleph in every word. Uh, and the Aleph is meaning. Meaning precedes the creation. The Aleph is before the Bay. Creation begins with the Bay. Ba Uh It's the first letter that has a sound. The Aleph has no sound until you start putting dots and lines on it. Uh, the Aleph is the, the, the divine silence out of which the divine word emerges to, to bring heaven and earth into existence. The heavens first, the dimension of height first, the dimension of meaning first. Meaning precedes creation. Creation is made of meaning. Um, Adam doesn't make up names for the animals. He reads the names. He reads the names of the animals because his, his wisdom was so great he could see the word that the animal was made of. So it's uh, the tearing of meaning from word is creates a, not just a confusion among us, but the, a confusion of all of creation. Now, this brings me to the Beel Bull, the Tower of Babel. There's a connection between the Mabul and the Beel Bull, between uh, the, the confusion of tongues and the confusion that the flood is. Um, it's the tower of confusion. Now, the, the, the uh, opening line of chapter 11 is, What does it mean? And all, all of the earth was of one language and uh, words that were one, something like that. Um, one of the great commentators of the uh, 13th century, the Baal HaTurim, says that uh, this means this, that they were of one language means that there was, there was just one word. In other words, any word could mean anything. It's not that everybody spoke the same language. This is not how the Baal HaTurim reads it. It's that words meant nothing. So you can, any word can mean anything. Um, You'll notice, as I, when I, I spoke, uh, you may recall last night, about totalitarianism and anti-Semitism, anywhere you find anti-Semitism, you find this tearing of words or meaning. It always entails an assault on language. I mean, I could go in, I have you know, three more lectures about the Nazis' assault on language. Um, Sforno, Ovadia Sforno, one of the great commentators of the 14th century, Comments uh, on the, on, on, uh, the phrase "nasei la nushem," and uh, the, the people that should make a name for themselves. Here too, you have a bilbul. You have a confusion of tongues that we can make a name for ourselves. Um, in other words, the idea that we are like God, that we, through our own autonomous selfhood, determine meaning and determine therefore name. Um, Rather than being named, to, as I suggested last night, to be named is to be summoned, to be called, to be chosen. Um, here, the idea, the confusion is that, that uh, it's not, it isn't God who names us, it's we who name ourselves. We live as if we can determine our own dimension of height by building a tower, our own dimension of sanctity out of ourselves, out of the material of creation without turning to the one who transcends creation. Um, the material, if left only with the material of the creation, we're left with 
the abyss, the immensity of the ocean, the, the crushing reality of the mountain. Um, there's a commentary that says uh, when the Israelites stood at the foot of the mountain, actually they said they're talking about the, the mountain, they're like under the mountain. The rabbis say God lifted the mountain over them, saying, if you don't accept the Torah, you'll be crushed by the mountain. But it's not a moment of coercion. It's a moment of, of explaining instruction that without the Torah, the massive reality of, of, of the strictly material world will crush you or will swallow you up. We just think with those, you've been to the mountains, you've been to the, the sea, think of the immensity of the mountains, the immensity of the sea. It's what I call um, in my PhD classes, the ontological immensity, uh, that only the, the word, that only the Torah can overcome, uh, can deliver us from. Um, we're also taught uh, in, in this connection with the tower and the Midrash that atop the tower there was to be a, uh, a warrior with a sword to do battle with God, to kill God, take over God, to assail the heavens. And this too ties in with uh, what I suggested to be a, an origin of anti-Semitism, namely getting rid of God. Um, where there's a confusion concerning God, there's a confusion concerning humanity. The confusion of tongues uh, is a blindness to the sanctity of the other human being. In a, a midrash uh, from the late 19th century, it's called the Pirkei de Rabbi Eliezer. It says that um, during the construction of the tower, when a man fell to his death, nobody noticed. But when somebody dropped a brick, everybody stopped working, and a great lamentation went up, crying out, where shall we ever find another one like it? This is a confusion. Confusion of tongue, confusion of meaning, word and meaning, confusion of height, holiness, blinds us to the sanctity of the other human being. And indeed, we. we we struggle every day with this confusion, don't we? Confusing what's important for what's really not. Um, finally, another commentary I like is from uh, Rabbi Yaakov Kuli, Nemeam Loez. Uh, it's a, a Torah anthology from the 18th century where uh, Rabbi Kuli reads the, the, the phrase, Navla Sham Svatam. Uh, let's confuse their language. Um, he points out that Navla, which is a cognate of Bilbul, the, the, the Beit Laman is, you know, the, at the root of the all the, you know, of Mabul, Bilbul, Navla, <coughs> can almost also be read Nev, Nevela, which uh, Rabbi Cooley points out means corpses. Um, let us make their speech produce bodies, corpses, dead bodies. This is what happens when there's a confusion of tongues. This is what happens in the, in the generation of Noah. The Hamas, the violence, produces bodies. Um, the, the, a confusion of tongue, when word, where word is torn from meaning, where human being is torn from human being, where there's a blindness, therefore, to the face of the other human being, a deafness to the lotiatzah, don't murder, end up with bodies. Um, indeed, this is what happens wherever uh, anti-Semitism thrives, ultimately. The confusion of tongue, the assault on the word, produces bodies. See, we see what's at stake in this. And then finally, the last line in the Parsha, we have a reference to Abba. The one who would, in the chapter soon after, would receive the covenant, which would ultimately be, lead to a covenant of Torah. Anyway, thanks so much. Have a good Shabbos. I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Patterson, we're looking forward to your lecture after lunch.